our topic, Madhurya Dhamdhani, and this is part two. So those of you that missed part one, there's the general in charge of everything over there, telling everybody what to do. I didn't want to <laughs> There's, there's room for more, too. <laughs> People needing seats. Just a review for those that were not with us yesterday. We spent some time discussing the life and the importance of the author of this book. The author of the book is Vishwanath. Chakravarti Thakur, and um, you'll find his name in the, the Disciplic Succession list that's at the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, a very prominent Acharya in our Disciplic mind. Um, he is best known for his prolific writings, mainly commentaries, and some uh, original texts like this one. And this, this one is simply a presentation of a certain portion of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is a book of Rupa Goswami, based upon the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to Rupa Goswami about bhakti. So he wrote, under the order of Mahaprabhu, the bhakti rasa amrita sindhu, the ocean of the nectar of devotion. And just a few verses from that book, Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, he expanded into his own work, which is um, the nine stages of bhakti, and how they unfold one after the next, after the next. And when we get to the final chapters, you'll be dizzy, it's so high. It's way up there. Um, beyond our imagination, but it's something that he's writing from experience, not hearsay. So, uh, where he, that his, that his life came Prior to, in, in our altars on the temple, in temples, Iskand temples, and often in homes, there's a series of photos of Pacific succession. And it ends with Jagannath Das Babaji in the senior position. A near contemporary of Jagannath Das Babaji was Balade Vidyabhusan. Baladev Vidyabhusan, if you look carefully, you'll find that Srila Prabhupada dedicated his Bhagavad Gita commentary to Baladev Vidyabhusan because a, a large part of what Prabhupada wrote in his Bhaktivedanta purports came from Baladev Vidyabhusan as well as Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was the one who was the immediate acharya before Baladev. Baladev, Vidyabhusan, uh, by Vishwanath's request or order, he wrote a commentary, a Gaudiya commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Very important, long history, not time for the long history, but his, his purports are very deep. And they're filled with rasika bhakti. He's a rasika bhakta. He has intimate understanding of the mood of love of Vrindavan. And it comes out liberally in his commentary. It, it's very amazing, very wonderful, very stimulating for the higher tastes of bhakti. 
it's the place where he was and it's where the place where he wrote from. And they dedicated to Rupa Goswami in the line of disciplic succession because of Rupa Goswami's special position, receiving the fullness of Lord Chaitanya's mercy to explain the bhakti process, which is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, especially through the chanting of the holy name, but in the chanting of the holy name revival of bhakti and the bhakti process. So he, Vishwanath, is at the feet of Rupa Goswami and expanding the understanding of Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasarmi to Sindhu, at least, you know, a few particular verses. So that's what we, so yesterday we heard chapter one, keeping it really simple. How does bhakti begin? The super excellence of bhakti? Bhakti is as independent as Krishna is. Everything else is dependent upon Krishna. Every other process is dependent upon bhakti. Bhakti is not dependent upon gyan or karma. Gyan and karma are dependent upon bhakti. Bhakti is independent. So how does bhakti begin? And he goes through a whole series of some say this, that, the other thing, the other thing, and he rolls them out, saying not possible. Bhakti gives bhakti. What we heard yesterday, this is just a little summary. And specifically, the Madhyama Bhakta. Some of you may be a little newer, you don't know what that means. It's the middle stage, Madhyama. There's the topmost, Uttama, and there's the beginning stage, Krishna, and there's the middle stage, so intermediate, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Very simple. So the intermediate, that's us, or trained, we're, we're to be trained to become Madhyama Bhaktas. That's the training and education element of our Krishna consciousness movement. How to live the life of a, in this intermediate stage. And the intermediate stage person, the Madhyama Bhakta, is enjoined in Srimad Bhagavatam and elsewhere in scripture to worship God, to make distinctions. Worship God, make friendships with devotees, extend Krishna's mercy to the innocent, and avoid Haranikashipu. <laughs> and little Haranikashipus. Yes, so, um, so we're, we're enjoined to make discriminations and distinctions. And then amongst the bhaktas, those more advanced, those who are more or less peers, those who are less advanced, bhaktas. And then there's different relationships amongst the bhaktas. The more advanced bhaktas, the peer bhaktas, and the less advanced bhaktas. And then, you know, the innocent. So, we're, we, we're, be, we're trained, we're enjoined to become a little discriminating, not judgmental. There's the difference between intelligence and being judgmental. To see what's what, as Krishna sees, here's the motive, this one, that one, the other one. These are symptoms of this one, that one, the other one. That's how Krishna sees. He's not judgmental. He sees. So we are also encouraged to see, and then according to what we see, as much as we can see properly, there's an appropriate way of extending uh, ourselves in service to those who are advanced, those who are peers, those who are less advanced, those who are innocent, and stay away from the Ranakashi Buddhas. So, and we worship Krishna. And all of it is directed towards, we heard, is Varnashrama, Charavata. So the, 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 the Achar of the Varnashram system is Vishnu Arajate, worship of Vishnu. That's what it is. The social structure is for that. So, we heard lots of nice things. And so I don't want to give yesterday's class again today. But, uh, in
in the morning Bhagavatam class, something came up that was just a, a reminder of elaboration from yesterday. Nishkam karma. Prabhupada doesn't use that term in his lectures or his purports. But both Baladev and Vishnu do. Nishkam karma means prescribed duties, dharma, perform your prescribed duties, perform rituals and the observances that you're supposed to do according to your position without the desire to achieve something. Just simply because it ought to be done. You make various sacrifices and da 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 da, da without the expectation of anything without the expectation of pious credits and attaining heaven and getting good stuff and avoiding the bad stuff, without that, nishkam karma is without those expectations. And he says, nishkam karma is not part of bhakti unless it's driven by bhakti. Or it, it, it is an anga of bhakti. In other words, we perform duties all kinds of duties. Kids go to school and dads go to work and moms go to the kitchen and do lots of things. Probably go to work too and this and that and the other thing. So many things. We do so many things for Krishna. So that nishkam karma becomes, it manifests the qualities of bhakti if it is an anga of bhakti but standing alone but it, it's not, it doesn't have the strength. But with bhakti it has strength. Strength to deliver us from the cycle of birth and death and achieve the real purpose that bhakti has. So, there's many other things that we heard. That was yesterday. Bhakti begins, bhakti creates bhakti, just like life comes from life. Bhakti comes from bhakti. And, and bhakti is something already there, but it's dormant, it becomes awakened, not by piety, not by karma, not by knowledge, studying so many books. It doesn't come that way. It comes through bhakti. Bhakti awakens bhakti. That's how it begins. So chapter two is now bhakti has begun. And so, let's see. Here's the, oh, oh yeah, there's the stages of bhakti. This is the overall topic, the nine stages of bhakti from Shraddha to Prema. Here they are. You ready? We saw this slide yesterday. First one, Shraddha. <laughs> and then after there's some Shraddha, if there's some good fortune of association of devotees, Sadhu Sangha. Put those two together. And the third stage, Bhajana Kriya, you do with sadhus what sadhus do. And then what happens after that is unwanted things in the heart become gradually, sometimes too gradually, <laughs> eradicated. And as that eradication of unwanted things comes, then steadiness in bhakti, until prior to that it's unsteady. And we're going to hear about that today. And as that steadiness matures, then it becomes taste. And then from taste comes attachment. Attachment to the process of bhakti, attachment to the object of the process of bhakti, attachment to Krishna. Then comes ecstasy eruptions of ecstasy, that's where it gets out of sight towards the end of the Dharmini. And then the Prema stage. So that's the nine stages from Rupa Goswami. And he's going to give in chapter by chapter uh, GPS, how to, how to get to the Prema stage. You know, turn left and if there's a stoplight, everything. So here's chapter two. Second shower of nectar, steps of bhakti from shraddha. That's the first one because chapter one had already started because there was um, some bhakti contact to sadhusanga, then to bhajanapriya. 
And then there's divisions of Vajna Kriya. That's the topic. So in the chapter, um, Vishwanath first, it's kind of a review, but he defines the topic of bhakti again by making reference to this, here's a little technical term, but it's a nice one to know. Paribhasha Sutra. Paribhasha Sutra is a Jiva Goswami term. Jiva Goswami uses this term to describe this particular verse of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, that BRS is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami's book. Jiva Goswami wrote commentary on it. And uh, that verse we discussed yesterday, but you, many of you know, and if you don't know, you'll hear it so many times eventually, everybody in the room will know it. Anyabhilashita shanyam jnana karma deyavritam anukoyena krishnanu shilanam avhairutama That's the topic of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's bhakti. And it's the definition of bhakti. And that definition of bhakti says what bhakti isn't, that's it's bhakti is unmixed with jnana and karma, And that's what it isn't. And then what it is, is it's doing everything, walking, breathing, cooking, thinking, sleeping, lying down, brush, brushing your teeth, everything that you do for the purpose of bringing your consciousness to Krishna, for Krishna's pleasure. So, Paribhasha Sutra, is it defi defined by Jiva Goswami? Uh, it's very simple. Generally speaking, it's, it's a classical term. It comes towards the beginning of the text. It summarizes the meaning of the entire text. It's like an emperor. There may be many kings under an emperor, but the, the king's answer to the emperor. So everything else in the text if it seems to be a little confusing, you have to go back to the Paribhasha Sutra because that's the, that's the emperor. It rules all the other... So if you think it means something other, it's got, you have the wrong meaning. It's got to be connected to, in harmony with, in sympathy with, fidelity with the Paribhasha Sutra. And it's, it's a sutra. It's a, it's, a, it's a code. It's terse. Very compact. And... It rules. It, it summarizes in an essence form the entire work. He gives examples, but we don't need to give those examples. The verse in this beginning of chapter 2, which was also referred to in chapter 1, it's a Rupa Goswami verse, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu verse. It begins, it's not mixed with karma again, and that pure bhakti, uttam bhakti, is uh, like a wish-fulfilling creeper appearing in the field of the senses. That is to say, when bhakti awakens, the senses become enlightened. Conversely, if bhakti is not awakened, the senses are dull and not satisfied and agitated and not perceiving clearly and disturbing. This bhakti, this pure bhakti, is the refuge of those devotees who firmly vow dhritavrata, never to seek any fruits except bhakti, Not the karma fruits or the jnana fruits, but the bhakti fruits. What's the bhakti fruit? Service, loving service, like bees, madhuvrata. They just want to taste the nectar. What's the nectar? It's, it's service to Krishna, loving service to Krishna. Nothing else. Nothing else. We're going to be discussing this, um, a whole class dedicated to this in, uh, over the festival of Holy Name. The, the Holy Name has such capacity. It's spoken of again and again as like honey. 
Mandu. That doesn't taste like honey for those who are jaundiced. The very life of this pure devotional creeper is a favorable attitude. It's right in Rupa Goswami's verse. Anukulya. For what? For the service, service for the pleasure of the Lord. So we were discussing. It's a good example. Well, let's take two examples. Kirtan and cooking. So many of you cook. And I shared this with a group. One devotee somewhere said, in a forum like this, public little forum, I'm really struggling with cooking for Krishna. And I asked, could you explain? She said, my whole adult life I've been cooking for my family. And I can easily relate to cooking for my family, but cooking for Krishna, I'm struggling with. No, it's a nice devotee. She's, but her, her, the, she's taking very seriously, devotionally, the idea that it's not just cook for your family and, oh, and then we go to the altar, ring a bell, and say some words, and now it's prashadam. Everybody's prashadam time. She's, that's cooking for the family. With, and Krishna's somewhere over there in the corner. And cooking for Krishna is something else. Now, this is a devotee that you know understood cooking for Krishna is something else. Or, you know, kirtan. This is one that I speak a lot to youth, you know, adults too, but youth in particular. Young people, they, they may not like washing pots, but they like kirtan. And, you know, what do they like about kirtan? Well, they don't necessarily like shapa, but they like kirtan. So there's the musicality part, and there's the social part, and there's the camaraderie part, and, you know, there's something magical about kirtan. Even non-devotees find something magical about kirtan. So there's kirtan with those elements, and then there's kirtan that's in the consciousness that let us offer this to Krishna. A whole other consciousness. Etc. So bhakti is, is this. The very life of this creeper is the favorable attitude for service for the pleasure of Krishna. That's at the heart of bhakti. We discussed it in Gita Nagari. From the heart, we're going to hear it again in Festival Holy Name. Here it is again in Victoria Kandamani. It's important that we understand what the essence of bhakti is. Therefore, he is presenting it. And when that is awakened, like a touch tone, the very presence of bhakti makes the heart and the senses gradually lose their iron-like material qualities and acquire pure golden spiritual qualities. Bhakti spiritualizes our existence. The affective part, the active part, any part, every part of the whole, one's whole life becomes bhaktiized or spiritualized or soft instead of hard. Same as the message of the Bhagavatam. The hard one who's one doesn't experience the bhava stage, it's right in Canto 2 of Srimad Bhagavatam, it's to be understood their heart is steel frame. Hard. And bhakti makes the heart hard soft. So now, for those of you that are familiar with Do you need to sit way over there? You have to tend your child? You like it over there. Okay, fine. I don't like it. Look at this front row seat and everything. <laughs> You're happy over there, huh? <laughs> She did 
didn't want to disturb everybody, so she was being very polite. I don't mind. Okay. Those of you that are familiar with nectar devotion, you know that there's three main parts or divisions. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti, Prema Bhakti. So in the Sadhana Bhakti, one of the three divisions of nectar devotion, he uses this metaphor, the Bhakti Lata Bija starts to grow because there's been some Sadhu Sangha, so the Bhakti Lata Bija, the seeds start to sprout. And there's two leaves. That's the first sign. When one cultivates Sadhana Bhakti with Dhrita Vrata, that, what's that? To never seek any fruits except Bhakti favorable to the pleasure of Krishna. But we're not quite there yet because we have a mix going on inside our hearts. But, nonetheless, these, this is Nectar Devotion, if you're familiar with Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1. There are six characteristics of pure devotional service, and these are the first two. Kleshagni and Shubhada, relief from the sufferings or causes of suffering, and Shubhada, the giver of auspiciousness. Auspiciousness, or attainment of auspicious qualities. That's in the Sadhana Bhakti stage, and it continues and continues and continues, but it starts even in the Sadhana Bhakti stage. Peshagni and Chubhada. Each leaf, you know, this, this is Vishwana, there's an upper and lower surface. Upper surface is smooth, the lower surface is rough. These are Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti and Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. Same leaf, upper and lower. Vaidhi can assist one to progress to Raganuga. Nectar devotion, you'll find it there. And he makes reference to the five, this nectar devotion class, five main activities according to Rupa Goswami, any one of the following five, if done without offense, small condition, then bhava can at once be experienced, even for a new person. Very beginning. <coughs> and Yamara can say, bhava bhakti. <laughs> so, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, Chanting the holy names of Krishna, worshipping the deity form of Krishna, residing in Mathura, Vrindavan, or Naperville. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the last one? <laughs> Serving a devotee. A small attachment for any one of these five items. No, this is his. Rupa Goswami says, without, without performing any one of these without offense. And Vishwana says, a small attachment for, I got a small attachment for Srimad Bhagavatam, etc. It's very powerful. Any one of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy even in a neophyte. I'll share something with you. Unlike um, any other place that I've been, maybe between 30 and 40 times in China, with completely new audiences, they've never heard the words Bhagavad Gita, 
They never heard the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Totally new. And during Kirtan, first time, they experience symptoms of ecstasy. And they ask. You know, sometimes they don't ask. You can see it. They're, they're crying, their whole body is trembling, and so on. Yes, but I just, you know, at the end, what was that? something I've never felt before in my life. I just, my whole body began to tremble and tears were coming and, and my heart was feeling feelings I've never felt before. What was all that about? And again and again and again and again and again. I mean, I wouldn't say it's, here's what Rupa Goswami says, it's a shadow of the real thing. Bhav Abbas. Totally new. They're not following any principles. They're just hearing for the first time in their heart moves. You know, because they haven't gotten the chance to make offenses yet. But they, you know, hearing with with attention and so a small attachment for any one of these five can arouse devotional ecstasy even in a neophyte. It's true. Then now remember, he's this Rasika Bhakta, so he speaks about Raga is a thirst or desire for things pertaining to Krishna or Krishna himself. Now there's Raga for material things. Raga, Dvesha, Samutena, Dvansva, Mohina, Bharata, that kind of Raga. But on the Bhakti path, there's the Ragatmika Bhaktas, that's the perfected souls, eternal associates of Krishna, like, for example, Mother Jasoda or Nanda Maharaj. They're Ragatvika devotees. And then there's Raganuga devotees that follow the Ragatvika devotees. This is introducing what's in nectar devotion. It's the Raganuga Bhakti stage. So now he's circling back and saying, you know, the upper and lower surface of the of one of the leaves is this Kleshagni, or the causes of misery or misery themselves are destroyed by bhakti in five different types. So, um, we often hear about this avidya one, The root cause of suffering is ignorance, avidya. The root cause of suffering is not desire. That's Buddhism. The root cause of suffering is ignorance. That's Vaishnava, the Vedic teaching. And from ignorance comes ignorant desire. From ignorant desire comes ignorant activity. From ignorant activity comes suffering. The root cause is not desire, the root cause is ignorance. And it's removed, ignorance of one's identity. So he gives examples of what ignorance is. To mistake that which is impermanent to be permanent. That which is full of misery to be pleasurable. That which is impure to be pure. That which is not the self to be the self. Etc. That's ignorance. So, the sadhana bhakti stage, in the early, even the early stages, that power for the, remember there's this qualifier, the dritta vrata uh, performers of bhakti, at least cultivating it, they can experience this eradication of ignorance and the suffering that goes with it. Asmita. It's not totally different, but it's different. It's specifically false ego. Even in the sadhana state, the false ego can be curved and even can be eliminated by the bhakti process in sadhana. Bhagavad identification of I and mine to accept only 
direct sense perception as real. So one can rise above that. That it arises from false ego or asmita. So these are types of kleshas, two out of five. <coughs> raga, that's the material kind of raga, attachment or desire, coveting to obtain material happiness and thereby decrease suffering. Raga, Raga, Dvesha, Samutena, Tavan, Vamohena, Bharata. It's the material Raga, it's slackened, the hankering for that kind of happiness which is illusory. Dvesha, that's the other side, hatred, aversion, aversion to, you know, I don't like unhappiness, I don't like unpleasant things, and I don't like the causes of unhappiness, so I get all invested in trying to make happiness happen. And abhinivesh, pervasive obsession with material things. For those of you that want to take pictures, I'll save you some trouble. I'll make the whole PowerPoint presentation. Yay! Because all it is is just a summary of this lovely book. And then you can, you know, teach in your Bhakti Riksha classes and, you know, remember it in your sleep or whatever you want to do. Of any page. Abhinivesh is defined as pervasive absorption with material things. So, uh, there's a nice verse, one of the ones that I quote a lot, that I like a lot. Vayam is how it begins. Vayam means fear. fear. Vayam, dutiyam, abhinivesh. <coughs> It's, a, it's this pervasive tendency to identify with asat. Whereas raga is a specific object. I like ice cream or you know, something. I like alcohol or I like something. I like, I like, I like money and I like jumping off bridges or something. You know, I like something. <laughs> So, Abhinivesh is pervasive, and that pervasive tendency, it's not totally disconnected from Avidya, but it has its own category. So these are sufferings, pervasive obsession with material things, instinctively clinging to bodily enjoyments, fear that death will cut one off from all these, fear of death, and fear of change, and fear of, uh-oh, you know, tomorrow may be trouble, or something. It's Klesha. And Bhakti has the power to diminish these immediately, and as Bhakti continues to mature, to their gone. Klesha Agni. All five, those five items, give rise to right or wrong action, religion or irreligion, piety or sin. And then, so when you're gripped by any one of those five or combination, then sin develops. This is, again, nectar devotion. He's just taking nectar devotion and writing a book about a certain section of nectar devotion. There's these four. Lying a seed, germinating of the seed, fruct unfructified, fructified. So, pra rub the karma. That's, you know, what's happening right at the moment. I stub my toe or something. Someone says something mean to me or my car gets hit. I saw some, the car was totally demolished. demolished. It was in the north country and a deer 
came out of the woods and went in front of a car and the car was demolished. The, the, the moose didn't look like he was doing so well either. But that's part of the karma. And so many other examples. So, and that's aprarabdha, it's just about that it isn't there yet. Bija is germinating in ruta or kuta is just in a seed stage. Now, these are delineated differently in different, by different acharyas, that's fine. This is Vishwanath's delineation of these four. Don't get confused if you see something. Wait a minute, over here he said this, and over there they said that, so what's going on? There's stages, that's all, of sin and the, the reaction to sin. All four included in the category of kleshas, which are all destroyed by sadhana bhakti. That's the main, that's the important point. That's the power, a natural result of this wonderful thing, bhakti. And then there's the other, Vaishagi and Shuba, Da. Now he takes it, there's different ways to elucidate or elaborate. He's taking it that there's qualities, devotional qualities, and devotional qualities arise, auspicious devotional qualities arise from bhakti. And, you know, it's a nice list. Disinterest in material affairs, interest in Krishna, gratitude, mercy, compassion, forgiveness and tolerance, truthfulness, <coughs> simplicity, equanimity, fortitude, gravity, etc. So, just like we spent time in Gita Nagari about empathic communication and one of the messages that was shared is that's a natural, natural, it's not a cosmetic, it's natural product of one who's acting from the heart of bhakti. And again, it's Rupa Goswami's verse. Krishna should be pleased and compassion is natural for such a person. Not, has to be, not that it has to be separately cultivated. Although one is interested in being compassionate, it's not separately cultivated. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't stand alone. Respectfulness, humility, etc. These are qualities of a devotee that become decorations. Krishna is the decorator. He has a big warehouse, quality warehouse. And he decorates his devotees with nice qualities. And there's the verse that he refers to, Yasyasti Pagdir Bhagavad Yakinchana, Sar Vayarpinai Satra Samas Sarda. Translation, his translation. All the demigods and their exalted qualities, such as religion, knowledge, renunciation, manifest in the body of one who has developed unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva. So go for the Vasudeva Bhakti and all good qualities will be yours. You've heard this expressed, same thing expressed in a different way, that is uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's description of faith. That verse, Shadha Shadde. Vishwas kahe sudritha nishchaya Krishna bhakti Faith is the conviction that if you achieve one thing all other desirable things will be accomplished. <clears throat> and everyone's got to have faith in something. The materialist has faith in get money. <coughs> Because money's the honey, and you get the money, and you can get happiness. <laughs> you get money, etc. The athlete is get the gold medal, or win the championship, or whatever it is. The spelling bee contestants, <laughs> primarily from India, you <laughs> win the spelling bee. 
then you'll be happy. So they, you know, anyway, etc. Everything is focused towards that one thing. Lifestyle, you name it, all kinds of austerities to achieve the one thing. Because you get the one thing and all other good things will follow. That faith is intrinsic to the soul. It's chapter, a whole chapter in Bhagavad Gita. If you don't have faith in Krishna, you're going to have faith in something because it's of the soul. According to the modes of nature, faith will be manifest. But was it? You have, you achieve one thing and all other things will be fulfilled. That's faith. So, when there's faith that is faith in Shuddha Bhakti, this teaching of Rupa Goswami, Krishna should be pleased, then automatically these good qualities become decorations. That's the shubhata factor. And then, so here's another verse to illustrate the same, another often quoted verse, bhakti parishana bhavo viraktiranyatra cha, use that ends there, isha chika eka kala prapadyamanasya. Devotion, that's bhakti. Direct experience of the Supreme Lord, paraisha. Anubhav. Detachment from all other things. Virakira Yatracha. These three occur simultaneously for one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prapadyamanasya. So do the Prapadyamanasya program and you have the other three. By one thing, the other things are accomplished. Then he makes this. In, in, realistic statement that we observe, that is, sometimes the Shubha qualities appear more quickly and the Ashubha qualities disappear slower, and so it's, you know, variation on the theme that's quite fine. Just like when there's a little plant that's growing, sometimes one leaf grows first and quicker than another leaf and so on. As with the difference in the rate of unfurling of leaves of a budding creeper, so also there are natural differences, devotee to devotee, and the rate of shubha qualities manifesting and of ashubha qualities disappearing. Quite normal, it'd be really boring if it was otherwise. So, he's slowly, he's, he's, he's retelling, reteaching Rupa Goswami's writings. The stages of bhakti begin with shraddha and trust in scriptures. There has to be. Otherwise, you know, there's no authority that you, that you accept. What's your authority? Your mind. You do have an authority, Mr. Mind. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll just say, uh, Arbindo, some of you have heard his name, he said, you know, he, he wrote books about you don't have to have any, any authority. And Prabhupada said, that if you don't have to have some authority, then why is he writing books? He wants you to accept him as authority, that's why. And, and, and other people that say similar things. So, faith in the scripture, and then, then you, you apply the scripture. You undertake activities that the scripture describes. Tadidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya. So you want to know, you make inquiry, and you apply it. Then you can get some realization. That's evidence of shraddha, or faith. And he says then there's this spontaneous, the rasika people, that have spontaneous or natural faith. And then there's the faith that arises from associating with those that have faith. That's most of us. Then there's some people that are in this other position. Or at least the more mature stages, it's just spontaneous. Swamhavaki. Now, 
this chapter goes from um, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, and the beginning stages of Bhajana Kriya. That's what we announced at the beginning. So now we're at the Sadhu Sangha stage. Faith leads one, no, there's some association, but specifically taking shelter of an elevated sadhu. Faith increases to the point where one wants to do that. It's natural. And then inquiring from that person about proper conduct. He begins to relate to like-minded devotees, take association to advanced devotees. These two propel one quickly to the stage of the Madhya Bhakta. He's running the, these ideas parallel. Bhakti is awakening, and now you're at another stage of the Madhya Bhakta. From the beginning stage to the Madhya stage, you're beginning when these things occur. Other aspects of Sadhu Sangha. The mind, so we're going to end the chapter real fast. Be ready for the break up. Spiritualization of the mind. That will be nice, won't it? <laughs> and it becomes more focused. You know, the, 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 the contemplations of the mind turn more towards spiritual topics. And the capacity to remain focused on the spiritual topics is a symptom. As through the, the association of devotees. Material attachments. They, they're still there. So that means the mind goes to them. And now, Bhajana Kriya, that's the third. Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya. There's steady and there's unsteady. And we even know about the unsteady one very much. <laughs> and there's symptoms of unsteadiness. So this is concluding the chapter. It's interesting and we can identify with every one of these unsteadinesses. But um, it's classic. In other words, we're just part of, turn on your GPS and it's going to tell you turn left and go, you know, in a quarter of a mile, make sure you make a right-hand turn. So there are going to be, you know, it's standard, unsteadiness has its standard phases. And as it says here, they're sequential. Utsahamai, false confidence. The, the classic that is referred to in, in, by Vishwanath is a young student, he goes to school for the first time, he's thinking, I, I know all this stuff. <laughs> I've heard um, Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj give class on this, and he has a very nice example. One time <clears throat> at the Bhakti Vedanta Manor, George Harrison came to visit to see what happened with the gift that he gave of the Bhaktivedanta Manor. So he came up in this big limousine and he came out of the car and believe it or not in London it had rained. And so a, a nice brahmachari saw him coming and he paid full bandabas right in the puddle in the <laughs> driveway. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. Utsaha. And when he stood up he was dripping with mud. And George said, you didn't have to do that. Good time, I Then, unsteady or sporadic, sometimes very enthusiastic, sometimes less enthusiastic. You know, observing a codices or, you know, doing, doing something or something. We're very enthusiastic to do something for a while and then we lose enthusiasm and get enthusiastic for something and then get distracted. It's just a stage of unsteady bhakti. Vyudha vikalpa. Indecision. He has, Vishwanath has a really long, funny section about this one. And it has to do with the young boy who is contemplating, should I remain renounced brahmachari or should I get married? 
and he goes, you know, over on this side, and the pendulum swings on that side, and goes over on this side, and goes over on that side. It's just the mind, the mind is taking him for a ride. <coughs> Indecision. Sankalpa, vikalpa. It's the mind. Accepting, rejecting. It's a symptom. Of course, it can be extreme, but even the milder form is, it's, it's just a symptom of unsteadiness. One isn't, there isn't ballast <coughs> gravity in the mind yet. Vishaya Sangara. That's, you consider there's something, a bad habit or a bad thought or a bad emotion, anger or something, and you want to like dismiss this bad habit or something. You consider it very carefully from different angles and you can't give it up. And then the other is the, you know, on the positive side. It's like yama niyama, accepting something favorable and rejecting un something unfavorable. The determination isn't strong enough. This dritta, vrata isn't sufficiently strong. Therefore, in steadiness. And then the final, notice there's six. The final is Taranga Rangani. I learned a little bit from Ranga means wave. Just like Ranganath, the Lord of the Garbhadak Ocean. Ranganath, the wave of the Garbhadak Ocean, Lord Vishnu. Or Mahavishnu, the causal ocean. That's Rangana, and there's Rangani, the, 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 the phrase at the end means it's a small wave, diminutive, Rangani. And Taranga, Rangani, is the enjoyer of the small waves. Literally, that's the meaning. So you start doing bhakti, and you start to have a little success in bhakti. You say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Temple commander, <laughs> Sankirtan leader, and, you know, I get to lead the kirtan, I cook the feast, and I'm getting all this pay. Oh, you cook such a nice feast. <laughs> so you become the enjoyer of a little success in bhakti. And that's, it's a cause for unsteady bhakti. It's actually, you know, not, it's not what bhakti really is, because bhakti is everything is for Krishna's pleasure. So those are unsteady stages, they're progressive, again, sequential. So one should be very careful about this lava, puja, and pratishta stage, as one becomes a little more effective in your bhakti activities, be vigilant with that one. Makes bhakti unsteady. So now this is the summary we're done. Um, Bhajana Kriya gives two of the qualities of pure devotional service relief from distress and all auspicious as group awakens. Chapter 1 Nectar Devotion. Other aspects of Bhajana Kriya, he does this throughout the whole book. Spiritualization of I and mine, to a degree, becomes more clear to understand I'm not the body, and things in relation to the body are not mine. Krishna consciousness begins to awaken, spiritualized. Material attachment, still for, is very strong. Porna, he uses the word. Meditation upon supreme, well, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Giri Rajmarish told this story. Sometimes in Bombay, because he was the president of the Bombay temple, Prabhupada would call upon different devotees to speak in Prabhupada's presence. And they were kind of like shy and nervous in Prabhupada's presence to speak. But because they were ordered to do so, they did so. It was a short class, usually. So, Giri Rajmaras told, I heard it a couple of times, that he was speaking, da 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 and then I fell 
fell into Maya, and Prabhupada interrupted and said, and then you fell into Maya. Mm -hmm. And then you fell into Maya. You're always in Maya. <laughs> <laughs> you may have these moments of remembering Krishna, but you're always in Maya. Okay, so that's... Now, how many of you did not receive an electronic version of this book and would like a copy. You all received it. Okay, I see some hands. Okay, those of you that are putting your hands up, if you know who Bhangsi Dari is, just, just see him at the end and he'll make sure you get a copy. He's like a magic magician. He'll just like <laughs> send it to your email address and you've got a, a, a digital copy. And I made some copies, which I purposely didn't pass out, of a chart that covers what we're going to be discussing tomorrow. Well, on the left-hand side is what we discussed today, these unsteady bhakti features. But if you take the trouble to read chapter 3, then you'll find something that's on the right side of this page. It's just a nice chart. Very compact, like, you know, makes it really easy to review. You don't have to read many pages, just look at the chart. Really simple. So, um, can you pass these out at the end? Not now, at the end. Just make sure everybody gets a copy. Any discussion? <laughs> okay. Do we have a microphone? So, um, so in order to sort of um, understand devotional service and Krishna and itself, it's connected to the soul, right? Yes. <laughs> this is a weird question. How do you know if you're feeling with your soul and not your mind? Oh, it kind of hears your mind. <laughs> <laughs> In our stage, count on it being your mind. It's like we're so attached to that thing, our lovely mind. So the soul and the mind are somewhat connected? No. Yeah. We're, we're, we're hovering on the mental platform. We're habituated, we're addicted to that mental platform. We're totally unfamiliar with the spiritual platform. Then, so I'll say it now a little softer. We're mixed devotees. <laughs> so somewhere in there is, you know, there's some attraction for Krishna. Somewhere in there. There's some light in that dark place, the mind. But, you know, it's, it's not very bright. It's somewhere in there. So largely, we're on the mental platform. Or on the bodily platform and the mental platform. But the soul is animating both the body and the mind, and there's some attraction from the soul, some attraction from the soul for Krishna, in devotion to Krishna. Mm. So let's just say, you know, Prashadam. Hey, Prashadam is nice, I like Prashadam. Who doesn't like Prashadam? You know, not just devotees. The people out there in La La Land, they like Prashadam. And that's it's not just the taste of it, it's they're, they're getting Krishna eyes just by taking prasadam. Unknowingly, we discussed this yesterday, the unknowing thing, but you know, that what makes it really nice is not just to have a good cook, it's, it's the devotion with which, that's the, or the kirtan. It's the name, it's not just the musicality. So we're attracted to the musicality, and etc., etc., like described. So, but, but, so the, the soul's attraction for Krishna is there, but it's really kind of tiny, dim, little. So, therefore, I, I was a little sarcastic at the beginning, but just to illustrate, we're, we're, we're covered, and there's some attraction for Krishna there. We want to awaken the attraction for Krishna part, and that'll make the, the mind more illumined, and then it becomes a spiritualized mind. And then it's the soul acting through the mind. But at present,
presently, that's not where we are. Okay? Yeah. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that's a nice question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, if you're facing, find yourself facing symptoms of unsteady progression. Yeah, well, that's everyone here. <laughs> Just somebody here. How do you make those more steady? Just continue. Bhakti, so practice. Abhyasa Yoga Yogtena, Cheta Sanani Rami. No. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, text number 8. Read it and if you know, follow it. It's, it's, it's practice. Abhyasa yoga. Abhyasa means practice. Yuktena, to engage yourself in the practice of yoga. Chetasa, that the mind. Na nyagamino, na anya, to know nothing other than Krishna. You cultivate that. That's the mind. And you strive to your capacity for wherever you are for steadiness, you know, steadiness in bhakti. Okay. Read the, read the verse in purport, you get a, you know, good idea. Cultivate. And, stay, and, you know, keep an association with those that are steady. That's a good one. Thank you. you want to get warm, stand near a fire. You want to get cool, stand near a fan. Or the air AC unit, you get cool. By association with those that have that quality that you you're, you wish to develop. Okay, microphone up front. Yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, just on that uh, Anishchita Bhakti, the stages that uh, we saw, are they progressive or are all they mixed? Anishita Bhakti stages. Um, you mean these? Yes. Yeah, they're progressive. It says sequential. Okay. I don't, it doesn't mean there's a bucket over here. Okay, now I'm done with that one. I'm into this one. It's not quite like that. It's, Much. Um, the first stage is Shraddha, and, uh, and the question about how does Bhakti begin? It begins with Bhakti. With Bhakti, with the Madhya Madhya. So, what is the symptom? We also hear that that um, for some in this particular current time frame, that they're carrying or they're they're reigniting their Bhakti credit from a previous life. Okay. So, what is a symptom of a person who is who is carrying bhakti from a previous life, as opposed to freshly receiving bhakti from? They ignite quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. I've seen it. And then, and then the, another feature is kind of like plateau out because that's where they were in their previous life. Hare Krishna um, The five attachments, uh, uh, the first attachment uh, we talked about was Bhagavatam. Was what? Reciting Bhagavatam. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, Jen. Keep going. Uh, what are the offenses that one needs to be aware of, guard against, apart from being inattentive? Are there any other? Could you give us more? <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. What are the offenses that one should be guarding against? Offenses while reciting Bhagavatam? They're minimizing its authority, speculating. Minimizing the authority of those who represent the Bhagavatam. Those are three things. You know, the offense. Try to, you know, the, the 
and the ten offenses against the holy name, not accepting that the, 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 the considering the scriptures are something ordinary, generated by ordinary people, and they're to be interpreted, and all those other things. So, that, that is, the essence of it is, it's not spiritual. And it's subject to my, you know, my powerful power of speculation. Minimizing the authority of the scripture. Therefore, it was the the flip side is accepting the authority of the scripture as you know as that which nourishes and is essential for faith. Now, in the beginning, one doesn't know that's a, that's quite okay, but then one should want to know. That that helps to know that I don't know, and I want to know. That's a good space. That's not a sense. That's a good space. <laughs> It's pretty ecstatic, huh? <laughs> I didn't show. Yes. Uh, you're on. Yes, you are. Okay. Yes? No? Uh, out of those five, uh, Bhagavatam yes. Association, uh, yeah. you said only if even one with yes. with one can. Yes, that's what Rupa Goswami says. Okay, but the chanting for us is important. Yes, that's so of, of the five, that's most important. Okay. But any one of the five. That, that's for bhava to arise quickly. Okay. So if someone with, is attached with deity worship and don't do chanting. Is what, what's deity worship without chanting? <laughs> okay. Um, so in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is already this description of development, the different stages of development of bhakti in the first candle and also Madhumani's life is reflecting. Yes. Yes. This, and Rupa Goswami is writing Nectar of Devotion based on what is in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, correct. And Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is writing, elaborating further on uh, Rupa Goswami's teachings. Yes, correct. And yet, um, this small book, this Madhuri Akadamini, is uh, there is something special about it that, I mean, he's elaborating, but still, it's, it's more than the elaboration, there is. I don't know, I, it's my feeling, I have heard you give the same seminar in a detailed way previously, years ago. But there is something special about this book. Um, I, I'm never able to, you can feel it when you study the book, but it is, I, I couldn't really understand why this Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is able to transmit that you know, in a different way. Well, it's not, he's not translating, he's elaborating and illuminating. It, you know, it, it's, it's because of his relationship with Radha Krishna. And it's because of his abject submission to Krishna Das Kaviraj and Rupa Goswami and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the associates of the Lord. Because of that, that heartfelt capacity of his, he can understand and has the potency to explain things to others that ordinary, you know, it's very special. It's, it's something, it's to give two, two examples to illustrate. In um, the festival of the Holy Name, we heard the first evening this Your Ever Well Wisher, we heard this Marki Name Bhagavad Dharma song. You know, Prabhupada was on the boat. Krishna came to him. Before he left, Rupa Goswami came to him. He's already, you know, blessed by Krishna and Rupa Goswami. But he's riding in the harbor. I don't have the power. But if you make my words empowered, then 
people can understand. So he's petitioning Krishna for the to, to empower his words so people can understand. This this the submission of such a great personality that makes their words so powerful in Saint Vishnu. I find it very special too. And therefore, please read the book. <laughs> because I'm making the, a, a, you know, a summary, and it can be more elaborately presented. Okay, up front. Here? Uh, no, not on. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, do Nitya Siddhas also exhibit these nine stages of monkey? Could you explain your question a little bit more than what you just said? Nitya Siddhas are already perfect, so why would there be stages of unfolding of bhakti? They're Nitya Siddha. Could you explain your question? Because when you, uh, in the life of Nādhimuni, it said that he got uh, bhakti from the... Bhakti Vedantas. But who was he before he was Nārada? He was a Gandhi. He was a Gandharva that fell. He became a Shudra. Then he became Narda. So it wasn't Nitya Siddha. In his previous life, he wasn't Nitya Siddha. Are we okay? I'm not, I'm not clear why you're asking your question. So he became Nitya Siddha? He became perfect. Sadhana Siddha. According to, this is a detail. The detail is that Narada and Prahlad are both considered a combination of Nitya Siddha, Sadhana Siddha. It's in Canto 7, Chapter 10, Purport. You can look it up. It's a very detailed question. Look it up. You'll find it. I read it, Maharaj. I got confused. You want me to get you unconfused? <laughs> This is, you know, it's one of our acharyas making this comment, Vishwanath. So he became perfect. But how to understand how someone who, who, is, who has become perfect through association, just like, you know, this example here. It wasn't spontaneous so through the association of the Bhaktivedantas, which he gave all the credit to, and Prahlad gave all the credit to Narada. Now, it's easier to understand with Prabhad, at least in the, the Bhagavatam message, chapter 10 of Canto 7, he was sent by the Supreme Lord, means he's a Vaikuntha Vasi. So how did Narada, how did, you know, how is it possible before he was even born, before he even heard from Narada, Narada understood he was a devotee? What did he do to become that great devotee? Not just hearing from Narada the womb of his mother, but even before that. So he said, Nitya Siddha that looked like he was becoming a Sadhana Siddha. So it's easier to understand that with Prabhat. Although there's different human cycles and there are different Prabhats, but Narada, at least the Narada, there are present Narada. Gandharva, cursed, became a Shudra, became, got association, became elevated, followed the sadhana practices, became perfect. Got Krishna's mercy. So I can't explain, it's not the same as with, with Prahlad, as with Narada. So you're seeking clarification about that, I can't offer it. Uh, the two, st uh, two stages in the Bhajana Kriya, uh, Nishtam steadiness and unsteadiness. Yes. So is that, that, that would be different than the Nishta Bhakti stays. <coughs> the Nishta study in the Bhajana Kriya is the different from the actual Nishta after Anathani Bhruti and... Uh, 
I, I'm not clear what you're asking. I hope you are. Yeah, so there are two stages in the bhajana kriya. Yeah. yeah. Uh, study, in, study bhajana kriya. Study and unsteady. Nishta and anishtata. So the nishta bhajana kriya is different from the nishta stage in the actual... No, it's the same. Nishta is the same as nishta stage. Nishta is nishta. Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu is the same as that Bhagavatam verse. Abhadre nityam Bhagavata Seva. Nashta prayeshu means almost destroy it. it that's a nishta stage before the ruchi, asakti, bhava, prema stage. It's a nishta stage. Nashta prayeshu almost destroy it. Abhadreshu. The abhadras, or the unwanted things, are almost destroyed. And how nityam bhagavata seva, by service to the book and the person bhagavata. So, does that answer your question? I think it does. Okay. Okay. Yes, back there. There's some new one. <laughs> only once. Just press only once, and that it has to be green. Yeah. Okay, you're green. <laughs> <laughs> between this and that. And over here is anarthas arise from offenses and you want to know is those anarthas or impurities of heart that arise from offenses, is that connected with these types of unsteadiness? And the answer is yes. The unsteadiness is caused by the anarthas that have arisen from offenses. It's just, you know, it's a small book. He's not like writing an encyclopedia. So it's, it's, it's focusing on the stages of unsteadiness, not where they arise from. An artist is studying where they arise from, offenses of different types and different severity and different duration and so forth. That's, it's, it's, are, the topics are connected. You have something further? So when, um <coughs> these stages that we see in the Sanishita Bhakti, when I find myself going around those stages, um, is my, uh, do I be just cautious, not act on them so that I prevent yes. committing offenses? Yes. Well, it, 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 no, not, no. You should be conscious of them to see where you are. And then, you know, we, we're unsteady, and so we're not even steady being unsteady. We're sometimes up here. <laughs> we're sometimes more down there. We have unsteady unsteadinesses. <laughs> and fluctuate. But so, the, the unsteadiness itself, the, the ness, the essence of being unsteady, arises from the fence. So, it's not that we need to, like, zero in on which of the stage are we. We need to zero in on how are we connecting with Krishna nicely because when, if, or if and when we're not connecting with Krishna nicely, there's some kind of an offense. Or at least inattentiveness. So we should strive for attentiveness, for example. Not just where are we in that fluctuating 
range of unsteadinesses. Kind of like, you know, it's not the same, but kind of like pulse reading. The, the, the standard procedure is somebody that's good at pulse reading, before they do the pulse reading, they get a general history. And then they do the pulse reading and they go, ah. And then they ask you some questions, further questions about, you know, your health condition. So now they have the history, they have the, so now they know where you are, at least, you know, while they're taking your pulse. And then later on the day, it could be a different pulse reading. And then, you know, a month later after the medicine, it can be another pulse reading. So it's going to fluctuate. So it just tells you, those stages tell you where you are, more or less, or more over here and a little less, you know. The Vyudha Vikalpa, the excessive obsession with accepting, rejecting, accepting, rejecting, accepting, rejecting. I've seen devotees that get over it. And, you know, that tendency just reduces. It's not like it's totally gone, but it's just <coughs> not like I, by beating them up or they're beating themselves up. It's just the bhakti process lifts them out of that. Then they have another, you know, more characteristic stage of unsteadiness. But the bhakti process lifts. So it's good to know the, that's not the essence, it's just that it's, it's a barometer. You know, your pH, you do some lit, litmus test and you say what your pH is. Mm -hmm. and so then it can change. And then it's higher, then it's lower. You have a question? No. Okay. So we're done? Oh, up here? It's five minutes to nine. I think we should close up. Guru Maharaj, where does pride fall under, under this? Is it at the end of the anasthenivati? That, because that, I see that that is the last cause of fall. Down. Well, it, it's it's lava puja pratishta, this tarangarangani. It's not specifically lava, but la, lava puja pratishta. You know, that, it, I, I, I'm getting some recognition I'm getting some title, I'm getting some position. Pride. Specific to pride from a little success in bhakti. You know, they can have pride for, <coughs> I don't know, something else. You know, get some awarded work and you get proud. Your, your daughter compliments you and says you're a great dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm a great dad. She's a smart daughter. <laughs> you know, worldly pride and then the other kind also. Okay. Okay, Shiva Kabu Pradhi.